uh, let's begin the chapter on the section 19 residual stress and distortions residual stress uh, one can understand that you know that stress is uh, the material is going through a lot of stresses during the fit up then after the fit up the welding and then post welding the uh, i mean it is going to cool down then there will be stresses because you are going to fit up the other end of that plate or pipe to some other joint so naturally the the whole thing will uh, then uh, play with the dimensional uh, tolerance and distortion so if one goes in the CSWIP uh, website and uh, there is a CSWIP TWI website. In that TWI the website, there is a folder called knowledge and knowledge sharing something. Then in there you go and uh, type uh, di dimension, distortion and tolerance and all that. So you will get many articles. So you can see that using those articles only CSWIP uh, course materials have been written because I can see similarities between the both uh, this. And you will be surprised that uh, we are using many of those uh, articles to make the uh, procedures in our company. Like for instance, dimension and uh, tolerance and distortion procedure is having all the uh, you know good articles from CSWIP and whatever they have taught there, we have made the same procedure. Basically, how to correct the dimension distortion, we have taken it from there. So you can understand the importance seriousness of this chapter. So in an inspector's job is not only uh, to you know check the welding and the welding dimension uh, welding tolerance or welding profile or weld visual but of course he will have to also undergo the uh, issue of dimensional checking so dimensional issues are the, always playing out in the uh, you know the structure that you are going to fabricate or the piping that you are going to fabricate both will be very important for an inspector to understand the dimensional tolerance and the, the whole uh, dimensional distortion issue. So in the earlier chapter, uh, what we told you was that during the fit up, the fit up fabricator will employ a lot of technique to do the fit up and show you. If the fit up is done and all uh, the fit up attachments, like for example, the chip chain block, pulley, the fastening arrangement, that all is still uh, not released. The stress is not released. Then you have to understand that the fit up has happened in the heavy stress. And that will create a problem because one of the stress problem is uh, HIC cracking is stress should not be there on the joint. And uh, that is the reason why you have to take care, note that during fabrication as much as possible, there should be already or only tack welded attachment should be there. Nothing else should be there and you should we see that your structure, your pipe is free from any fastening arrangements, if I can call them. So the development of residual stress because welding involves highly localized heating of joint edges to fuse the material. Non-uniform stresses are set up in the components being joined, generated, generate, being joined and generated because of expansion of and contraction of heated material. Initially, compressive stresses are created in the sounding uh, cold parent material surrounding cold material or parent metal when the weld pool is formed due to thermal expansion of the hot metal and hza adjacent to the weld pool tensile stress occur on the cooling when contraction of weld metal and immediate as is resisted by the bulk of cold parent material metal so yeah, as you know we are playing with the steel in any company we are not using wood you know we are not carpenters but we are you can categorize us as steel carpenters. The rules are slightly different. In wood, there is no expansion and contraction during the joining of wood. But if you steel, see in steel, since we have to make it hot to its, you know, like 1500 degree and all during welding, naturally there will be a lot of heat and there will be a lot of cooling. So naturally, we'll, tolerance wise, we'll have to take care a lot. So as long as the stresses are above the yield point of the metal at the prevailing temperature, they continue to produce permanent deformation. But in so doing are relieved and fall to the yield stress level. So these to cause further distortion. So what will happen when the material is beyond the yield point? Naturally, there will be uh, it will be having the stress and it to go into the permanent deformation. When it is below the yield stress level, then naturally it can come back to its original position. We could release the weld from the plate by cutting along the joint line. It would sh shrink further because even when the distortion has stopped, the weld contains elastic strain. 
equivalent to the yield stress. So why we are learning this, you will come to know because when we are welding, we are using the distortion generated by the heat and then trying to weld from a different direction so that it, the plate will go back into its original shape. And that is why we are using this methodology. You will see in coming uh, in this lecture itself, you will see that happening. So you know that when the material cools down, it will shrink. Especially the uh, plate, steel plate or steel pipe. Usually an experienced welding engineer will know this and then depending on that, he will give that cutting tolerances or cutting allowance for his welding joint so that the final structure. Because you know the structures are made of so many plates and components. If you want, if you are. If you have done fabrication of top side deck. Or a large structure, you will know. That uh, you know when they are doing fabrication of tanks, they are taking note of that presetting during cutting. Uh, you can see cutting video for uh, tanks. They there they will take the note of uh, allowance for welding shrinkage and all. So the entire length of the weld is hot and starts to cool. If confused to the parent metal, the weld will shrink, reducing its dimensions on all three directions. Yeah, then uh, since the weld is fused on the parent metal under combined cooling, the residual stress will occur. So that's what stress will occur. Why it is connected to the parent material on some other side. So naturally there will be stress occurring there. The stress left in the joint after welding are referred as a residual stress. From the above, it can be seen that there will be both longitudinal and transverse stress. In case of very thick plate, there is a through thickness component. So the all the four directions stress will be there and also bottom and top. So that there is like heavy 100 mm section, then there will be a lot of distortion and stress. Distribution of residual, stre residual stress. Let's have a look at this. Magnitude of thermal stress induced into the material can be seen by the volume change in the weld area on solidification. Subsequent cooling to room temperature. For example, when the weld of carbon magnesium steel, the molten me metal Volume will be reduced by approximately 3% on solidification and volume of solidified weld metal will be reduced by further 7% as it is temperature falls from melting. So this is just a guidance factor, 3% and the 7% thing. In actual uh, situation, you will have to go by your own experience and which you have gained through the knowledge and you know issues that happened in the site. Uh, I remember correctly one of the companies I worked, we made the deck and during making the deck, we put all the plates which was very, uh, it was a very long uh, deck, almost like 150 meters, 150 meter by 200 meter deck. So for that, a lot of beams were used, a lot of plates were used, a lot of thickness was there in that. So a lot of pillars were there in that. So naturally during the fabrication, what we considered was that same dimension as the drawing and using that we cut the plates. So the result was that uh, since we cut the same dimension of the plate as per the drawing, the result was that the whole deck became 40 mm short. So what does this mean? That means that if you cut to cut dimensions, if you take from the drawing, the final end will be shorter. So always you'll have to give the welding shrinkage tolerance and you have to understand this is a very important, uh, you know, important control. So for instance, I will give you an example. Let's say your module is having six pillars or let's say four pillars. Yeah, <clears throat> between the pil pillars center to center has to be right. It has to be perfect, right? So how many joints are coming? I mean, um, joint means building joints, which are primary joints. I'm not talking about supports, fillet joints and all. I'm talking about full penetration joints. So how many, like let's say six joints, major joints are coming between the two pillars. So in this six joints, if I say, if I cut perfect and if there is a 2 mm shrinkage or 3 mm shrinkage, so in the end, center to center will get reduced by 18 mm straight away. And then you will have problem because why the center of the deck is important because if the jacket center is also important. So if the jacket center is in uh, your 18 mm short, then do you think during the erection your jacket and the top deck will match? Obviously there will be a problem. So when you are doing larger structures where there are six pillars or eight pillars, the center to center and overall center to center of the four a uh, six leg jacket or four leg jacket. The center to center has to match. So I have to take care of that six joint. I have to consider two mm plus in the 
or 3 mm plus sometimes in the welding joint or during the cutting stage. So once I do that, uh, what will happen? 6 threes are 18 mm, so 18 mm and the final shrinkage is also 18 mm. Then your center to center will come perfect. So what will happen if you take a uh, uh, six, eight, 4 mm, so it will become 24 mm and then you will see that it is going on the plus. Side. So what will happen during the fabrication, fabricator, what if the foreman and supervisor and the construction manager is intelligent and you tell him that I have given 4 mm, then what he will do when he will do the final joint, he will at least grind off 2 mm, 3 mm and try to make it proper. But if you are negative, then there is big problem because then you have to do a buttering and everyone want to avoid buttering because buttering is not giving that same tensile property. So it is always better to be on the plus side, you know, 1 mm, 2 mm plus side, so that whenever there is a grinding need to be done, they can easily grind at site. This is very important. And when a QC inspector is seeing that whatever is he is releasing, and you know, that is what how the QC inspector becomes supervisor. So QC inspector usually will not take care of this. It's usually engineer or QC engineer or QC supervisor's role because when he is seeing that the Product is being built. That time we will note that the dimension, overall dimension, where it is going. If the QC inspector from the beginning will look into these matters, then naturally he will. You know, after some years he will become. He will already know what supervisor is doing, right? So he can easily take care, and he's a, he can easily uh, in his sight. He will tell them what to do. You do this, do that. Give extra cutting tolerance. That means QC inspector has to start looking into this issue right from the cutting stage because by the time the component is getting welded all your items are cut already so a intelligent qc inspector will go and ask supervisor or his manager or during the discussion at how many cutting tolerance allowances you have given you can even ask the production supervisor that is the level of involvement and this is the things which qc uh, c -SWIP will not teach you to that particular you know point i have seen that in the industry people like me or you know who will open this YouTube channel and start telling, they will always tell about their experiences rather than what is in the book. Naturally, you will learn this, but what is not in the book is generally uh, is like that iceberg. You know, I will show you one picture. You can consider this as meme. You know, this usually usually the people people these days understand easily if the things are in meme. You know, otherwise they don't understand properly. So you can see this <laughs> C SWIP is this above water. This is what C SWIP documents will teach you. The book will teach you. What they will not teach you is all below the water. This is what people like us make the video need to give more examples. That is why I uh, understand that many people who are doing the videos, they are talking about this rather than the small part. The small part, of course, anybody can learn through the book. Okay, so having known that, we'll come back to our document. Otherwise, our document will you will say that yeah, well, it took two hours to explain. But this is the reason. So the magnitude of thermal stress induced into the material can be seen by volume changes. We discussed three percent, seven percent. Don't uh, go by this strict values, but just keep it in mind that something is reducing here rather than increasing. Particular to the weld, the transverse direction, the stresses in the weld are more dependent on the clamping condition on the of the part. So how it is clamped and all that um, during the fit up. Transverse residual stress are often relatively small, although transverse distortion is substantial. The distribution of transverse residual stress in a butt joint is shown below. The tensile stress of a relatively low magnitude is produced in the middle section, while comparative compressive stress is generated at both the ends of the joint. It must be noted that longer the weld, higher the tensile residual stress until yield stress is reached. So the pattern of residual stress on the transverse direction, uh, you can see this well joint what he has done here. And he has said there, there, there is a tension and com compression, both kind of, uh, you know, uh, the stress is there on the welding. So the stress, both the parent material side, there is a stress of pull in the uh, either direction. And then compression is because of the weld volume shrinkage and all that compression. Both kind of things are happening there simultaneously. In longitudinal stress, the weld and some of the plates which has been heated are at or near yield stress level. So yield stress level means already your dimension will get permanently distorted. Moving out to the plate from the HZ, the stress first falls to zero. 
the stress uh, stress region extends beyond the weld and has to the parent material. Beyond this, there is a region of compar compressive stress where the width of width of the band where where tensile residual stresses are present depends on the heat input during the welding. Higher the heat input, wider the band where the tensile residual stress occurs, and that is the reason why we are telling uh, always that you know the range has to be within the range the uh, interpass temperature. Uh, it should not be that. Uh, High heat, if you can give only high current and weld in high heat input, naturally the welding will finish. But what about the distortion and other things? So when there are like 50 or like 80 welders welding uh, a deck simultaneously released joint, one must always have some inspectors to do the um, surveillance checking. Whether uh, you can see our chapter on uh, weld audit. Why we are doing weld audit is because this welding which they are doing. We need to see if it is a critical joint. Uh, these people are doing it within the range and uh, heat input is proper. And that is, you can see that video is a beautiful video. And I'm telling you, the more you will get to learn And uh, I'm, I'm very sure that welding audit is going to be extremely important. And I don't know why CSIP doesn't have a chapter on weld audit. So I, you know, if uh, people are listening, then naturally, if I have the chance to talk to CSIP board, we, we will tell them to include a weld audit and how to do a weld audit, how to calculate heat input, how to check whether the welder is welding within the parameters. Because after the PQR is made, the weld, job of welding engineer is over and the QC inspector's role starts. So CSWIP doesn't have any guideline on how the welding, uh, during the welding, what supposed to be checked. There is like a, you have given a thousand page uh, book and said taught everything about the welding and finished. Right? So process audits. So process ka audit hona chahiye. Like for example, CNC cutting. CNC cutting ka bhi process audit hona chahiye. Aapka site pe drawings aap log use karta hai. Wo drawing ka process hai. So kaise wo drawing pehle uh, project office mein aata hai. Kaha se phir wo production mein jata hai. Wo transmittal se jata hai. Phir production wala jo hai char pach uska copy le leta hai. Phir uspe master uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, you stamp karta hai usko, latest drawing date. Then the production ka factory mein release kar deta hai. So this process is process ka bhi hamesha audit hona chahiye. Then CNC ka maine bola. Usi tarah se welding, welding audit hamesha hona chahiye. Isliye weld ka ek ek jo bhi processes hai, jisse ye company chalta hai, naturally sab process ka audit hona chahiye. So that is why when you watch that video, you will get more knowledge and then you will understand the distortion issue and all is connected because that is why. So here, uh, just to remember this page, we have more try to confuse you. Is that that the welding should happen at their own uh, predetermined, uh, you know, heat input levels, so that the distortion, the stresses can be calculated and can be kept to the bare minimum. So the maximum level of tensile residual stress is equal to the value of yield strength of the weld metal at the room temperature. This is just like a thumb rule. Let's see some more uh, data uh, data on this. Uh, all fusion welds which have not been subjected to post welding treatments, the vast majority of the weld joints contain residual stresses. Even the fillet weld will contain some residual stress or the other. The procedure developed to minimize distortion may alter the distribution of the residual stress, but do not eliminate them during and reduce their peak level. So the stress welding may stress aata hai, kahan, kahan se aata hai, wo fit up se bhi aa sakta hai. Welding ka khud ka apna stresses hai. So, if you have a time for fit up, you can see that you have stress already in the building and you have a building. Mein bhi Plus, the building has a stress. So, it will be a distortion. Kar dega. So, this is all we need to. But how to tackle it? Don't worry, we will give you in this chapter itself. You will see many, many, many kind of things uh, which we call good engineering practices will be discussed. Only thing is, how much you can use it in the company, how much you can use it in if you tell it, you will talk about it from production and fabrication. If you leave it, naturally, this never is going to always become going to be disaster. Never it is going to improve. One method of reducing the level of residual stress in the welding joint is to perform PWS treatment relief the stress. One method of reducing the level of residual stress in the welding joint is to perform PWS treatment relief the stress. Every joint can be done with PWS treatment. Technically, it can be done if you want to do it. Because it can be released from PWS treatment stress. But if you have high carbon and high high carbon uh, steel hai to aapko wahan pe jo properties chahiye wo aap properties kho dega like 690 hai material ko mai pwst kar dega to 690 material apna khud ka properties kho dega so pwst in ss stainless steel and all you cannot do normal carbon steel you can do it but the cost will become terrible 
So bare minimum feet up listing is done only to the critical joints where the engineer will tell you to do that. So naturally, even the spec above 45 mm at all, if it goes only, AWS or the ISO standard will uh, tell you to do the PWST. I'll go by the WPS or go by the PWST requirements. So once the temperature is raised, the yield stress starts to drop. As a result of this peak residual stress, which were upon the value of the yield stress at the room temperature cannot be carried over any more by material and are relaxed by plastic deformation. So you so what happens is stress goes on rising and then finally what will happen naturally? Sometimes it's relaxed by plastic deformation, which is plastically. Usually the plastic deformation is confined at the level of grains, but in some situation can lead to significant deformation of the welded components. So, so check uh, the steel can tolerate then it will have plastic deformation this process ends when the material has reached the soaking temperature so you understand that always the soaking temperature is very critical so the level of residual stress will be reduced by the difference between the value of yield stress at room temperature <coughs> at the soaking temperature as seen in the following figure this can be reduced this can reduce the level of tensile residual stress up to quarter of its initial level but Compressive residual stress are left unchanged. It must be pointed out PWST does not completely eliminate these residual stresses. So PWST during the you know temperature raising cycle and then the holding cycle and then again the relieving cycle. These three cycles, it will try to reduce the temperature uh, stress to the very great extent, but very some stress will still be remaining in the component. That is what you need to learn from here. Effect of residual stresses since the formation of <coughs> residual stress cannot be avoided. It, uh, it's appropriate to ask the presence you know, is a concern. As with many engineering situations, the answer is not simple yes or no. There is always there are numerous applications where the existence of residual stress would have little or no influence on the service behavior of the joint storage tanks, building frames, low pressure pipe work and domestic equipment examples where the joints can be used as in welding condition without any detriment. So majority of the structures you will see no need to do any PWST or anything like that. The residual stress will be there, but it will not have any detriment impact on its service behavior. But in some cases it will be important. So that is what you need to know. So residual stress are considered detrimental when so these points four points you need to understand and remember lead to distortion and out of shape welded structure. It is not fit for purpose. So this I remember. I worked in a shipyard company. Shipyard has started a new building division and of course I'm not part of that. So when the new building division started, they didn't kick and then they got order for four small vessels or let's say tankers. Oh, these are oil tankers. So these are very small, not that small also, but you can say oil tankers are always big. So it's a vessel, it's a ship. It's a problem okay, since it is a new company. Naturally, there is not good coordination between the members. You cook up. Imagine a new kitchen up set up. Naya kitchen may naya chef either other silikia ke apne daldia. So pale din apka jo kana banega, ukesa hoga. Isitara se wo bi a project karega, naya company, naya public. So apas me tal me lisa puna chaye or tabi jake product final a chabane. To yahaka hoga, ye charo tanker ka dimension distortion is now gaya. Ki wo ship hit a teda bangaya. And you can imagine that the ship is having such a dimensional distortion. That it is even for the dimensional issue, there is the client is not accepted it. Finally, oh charo tanker, both sal tak shipyard mein parara, or baad mein usko aaja da mein, I think one third cost mein usko bechna parara. Isa kuch ho gaya wo deal. So ab imagine kar sakta hai dimensional distortion kitna bada issue hai. Both bar refabricate karna padta hai. Both bar both problems maine dekha hai industry mein. Piping ka both bar problem dekha hai. Piping ka main apko example de dega ki main jo shipyard mein tha. वहां पे पाया डेड क्वालिटी डिपार्टमेंट नहीं था मतलब मैं ये 2000 की बात कर रहा हूं 2000 2001 2002 सो so, वो शिपयार्ड में हम लोग पहला क्यूसीस था पहला क्यूसीस मतलब पाइपिंग डिपार्टमेंट में डायरेक्टली 20 क्यूसी डाल दिए तो अभी क्या होएगा व्हाट इज टू हैपन आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट ओल्ड शिप्स यूज्ड टू कम दे यूज्ड टू टेक द पाइप फ्रॉम द ओल्ड शिप पुट इट इन द वर्कशॉप पुट इट ऑन द प्लेट एंड टू एंड कनेक्ट इट विद द बोल्ट फ्लांज टैक इट एंड देन द सेम टाइप ऑफ पाइप other side they used to make so if you want to if you only shipyard people will understand this so this pipe used to go in the ship fir baad mein wo bolt nikal deta tha tack welding niche fir usko welding karta tha to welding mein distortion to aayega hi 
फिर वो पाइप जो बनेगा वो अपने टारगेट पाइप बराबर तो टारगेटिंग किया बट उसको पाइप उधर ही वेल्डिंग करने का छोड़ के आपने अगर नीचे वेल्डिंग किया जमीन पे या कोई सपोर्ट के ऊपर नेचुरली वो डिस्टोरशन टेढ़ा मेढ़ा तो होने वाला है तो जाके जब ये शिप पे लगता था तो उसमें ऑलमोस्ट सेवेंटी सिक्सटी सेवेंटी परसेंट ज्वाइंट काटना पड़ता था और फिर वहां पे जगह पे वेल्डिंग करना पड़ता था इसलिए वो पाइप शॉप में बहुत सारा जो एट अ टाइम बीस बीस शिप खड़ा रहता था शिप में तो नेचुरली इस बीस शिप खड़ा रहता था तो नेचुरली उतना पाइपिंग और उतना कंपनी को लॉस और टाइम नेचुरली ज्यादा लगेगा ज्यादा स्ट्रेस सबके ऊपर तो शिप में बहुत सारा जो ये जो पाइपिंग जॉइंट है कट होता था तो हम लोग ने इसका बात को मतलब यू नो सॉल्व किया इसको बहुत कंट्रोल में लेके आया आई एम वेरी श्योर हैप्पी दैट वो मैनेजर ने भी हमको बहुत साथ दिया और हम लोग ने भी यू नो छुपाया जो फोरमैन वगैरह छुपाता है और ये काट के वहाँ वहीं पे बराबर कर देता है तो ये सब वो मैनेजर तक बात पहुँचता नहीं है पर हम लोग ने इसको एज ए क्वालिटी कंट्रोल इंस्पेक्टर से बात उठाया फोटोग्राफ लिया मैनेजर तक पहुँचाया आज वो मैनेजर गुजरात में एक बड़ा शिप में काम कर रहा है आज 20 साल के बाद भी हमारा रिलेशन बहुत अच्छा है सो so, ये सब सीखने लायक है और ये सब चीज आपका जो एक्सपीरियंसेस uh, है वो आपको बहुत सिखाता है सो so, ये डिस्टोर्शन आउट ऑफ शेप जो वेल्डिंग स्ट्रक्चर नॉट फिट फॉर पर्पस होना है ये बहुत ही बड़ा लेसन है और ये आप देखेगा जब आप ज्वाइन करेगा या ऑलरेडी ज्वाइन है कोई ये लेक्चर सुन रहा है तो वो ऑलरेडी मालूम है उसको कि ये कितना बड़ा लफड़ा है बहुत बार बहुत सारा जो रिफेब्रिकेट करना पड़ता है सो so, ये एक्सपीरियंस है ये एक्सपीरियंस में जब आप जूनियर लेवल पे काम कर रहे हैं तो ये सब आप डेफिनेटली सीखो बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर डायमेंशनल एट दिस एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वेल्डिंग विल ब्रिंग सम काइंड ऑफ डायमेंशनल इशू दैट यू मस्ट बी अवेयर एंड हाउ टू मिटिगेट दैट विच इज विल विल सी दिस इन दिस चैप्टर आई होप मेनी पीपल विल लर्न एंड टेक नोट इफ एफेक्ट डायमेंशनल स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द वेल्डेड असेंबली वेन मशीनिंग वेल्डेड कंपोनेंट्स रिमूव रिमूविंग लेयर्स ऑफ मेटल near the joint may disturb the balance between the tensile and compressive residual stresses and further deformation of or warping can occur so ye jo welded components ko jab machining karta hai to jab metal ka layers nikalta hai to fir naturally ye iska balance bigad jata hai aur iska jo residual stresses deformation warping bhi ho sakta hai so ye sab hota hai aapko ye janne ke liye industry mein bahut sara examples hai so this can make it difficult to hold critical machining tolerances and it may be desirable to stress relief or to achieve the dimensional stability for example jahan machining ka zarurat padta hai wo actually drawing mein clearly diya rehta hai ki machining tolerance 0.001 chahiye ye padte hi aapke kaan mein alarm baj jana chahiye uh, main aapko ek famous example deta hu hum log ek module bana raha tha jisme ge ka uh, generator ya power unit ke liye uh, generator baithne wala tha तो इसका जो फुटप्रिंट है जहाँ पे वो जी का ये बैठने वाला है उसका जो मशीनिंग टॉलरेंस दिया हुआ था वेरी क्लियरली सो उधर मशीनिंग के लिए लिखा हुआ था पर टॉलरेंस दिया नहीं था ऐसा ही कुछ तो था मैं ये 20 साल पहले की बात है तो कॉन्ट्रैक्टर ने उसको क्या किया कि ये जो चार पैड्स बनाया जो मॉडल के ऊपर जहाँ पे ये जनरेटर बैठने का था उसका टॉलरेंस वन एम एम टू ऐसा करके रखा क्योंकि टॉलरेंस दिया नहीं था ड्रॉइंग में इसीलिए और वो अरे याद दिया नहीं था मालूम है बट जब आप पता है कि जनरेटर का प्लेट वहां आने वाला है और आपका मॉड्यूल में वन और टू एम mm का डायमेंशनल टॉलरेंस आपने रखा हुआ है तो कैसे होगा आपको पता होना चाहिए जब एक बड़ा इक्विपमेंट बैठता है तो वहां पे जो मेटिंग सरफेसेस है वो जीरो जीरो होना चाहिए एटलीस्ट आप कॉन्ट्रेक्टर को पूछ सकते हैं कि सर ये जनरेटर बैठने वाला है इसमें टॉलरेंस तो दिया नहीं है तो मैं क्या टॉलरेंस कंसिडर करूँ तो वो जो एक बड़ा ऑयल एंड गैस का फेब्रिकेटर था उसने नहीं कंसिडर किया मैं ही वो प्रोजेक्ट में क्लाइंट था तो Naturally, ये बात ठीक है ड्राइंग में नहीं दिया है इतना क्लियरली बट आप पूछ सकते हैं राइट क्योंकि आप फैब्रिकेटर जो कंपनी है वो बहुत ही एक्सपीरियंस वाला है तो नेचुरली वो पूछना चाहिए पर उसने पूछा नहीं पर आप लोग जब एक कोई ड्राइंग प्रोजेक्ट शुरू होने से जितना ज्यादा पड़ेगा उतना ईजी आपका प्रोजेक्ट जाएगा और जब आप ये देखता है कि यहाँ पे कोई कंपोनेंट आने वाला है जहाँ पे मशीनिंग होने वाला है यहाँ पे हब आएगा ये हब में सर्कुलर हब है तो ये कहीं कहीं जाके कनेक्ट होगा और वहाँ पे फिर वो मशीनिंग होगा जैसे कि हम लोग अभी शिप में बहुत सारा इक्विपमेंट लगाता है जैसे कि थ्रस्टर्स जब हम लोग शिप में बाउ थ्रस्टर्स लगाता है उसका उधर मशीनिंग होता है तो हमको पहले से पता होता है कि इधर डिस्टोरशन नहीं आना चाहिए और यहाँ पे मशीनिंग होने वाला है यहाँ पे एक थोड़ा एक्स्ट्रा रखने का थिकनेस सो दैट वो मशीनिंग में वो टॉलरेंस आ जाएगा बराबर तो ये सब चीज आपको सोचने पर मजबूर करता है और आप जूनियर लेवल पे अगर किसी सीनियर ने सोचा नहीं तो आप उसको हाईलाइट कर सकते हैं कि सर इसमें मशीनिंग होगा क्योंकि यहाँ पे बड़ा इक्विपमेंट आने वाला है यहाँ पे क्या टॉलरेंस चाहिए सो दैट वो पैर प्लेट में वेल्डिंग करने के टाइम पे हमको टॉलरेंस मेंटेन करना है जीरो जीरो में तो हम लोग को कुछ एडिशनल चीज करना पड़ेगा क्या करना पड़ेगा ये देखते हैं हम लोग ये वीडियो में बट 
ये आपको पहले से पता होगा कि ये बिल्डिंग में डिस्टोर्शन होने वाला है तो आप बहुत सारा खबरदारी पहले से ले सकते हैं सो एनहेंस्ड रिस्क ऑफ बिल्डर फ्रैक्चर वेन द रेसिडियल स्ट्रेसेज आर प्रेजेंट इन दी बिल्डेड कम्पोनेट स्मॉल एक्स्ट्रा स्ट्रेस एड में इनिशिएट अब फ्रैक्चर प्रोवाइडिंग अदर कंडीशन आर मेट सो इसमें वो बोलता है कि बिल्डिंग करने के टाइम पे ब्रिटिश फ्रैक्चर भी आ सकता है पर वो देर आर सर्टन कंडीशन ओनली दैट टाइम इट विलपन इट्स द ब्रिटिश फ्रैक्चर थिंग इज नॉट ऑलवेज यू नो गोइंग टू हैपन but one must know this is what i am trying to tell so uh, can facilitate a certain type of corrosion some metals in certain environment corrode rapidly in the presence of tensile stress the stress corrosion cracking can occur and in this case is a joint in as welded condition containing residual stresses suffer excessive attack retard if the joint is stress relieved so stress se hone wala corrosion jo stress corrosion cracking hai बट यूजुअली स्ट्रेस से होने वाला करोजन के लिए बहुत टाइम लगता है बट आई डोंट नो दिस दे आर टेलिंग ये जो आपको जब आप जब यू नो कई प्लांट में वगैरह काम करेगा या ये जब जाएगा ये इन सर्विस में होगा स्ट्रेस करोजन क्रैकिंग आर बी एग्जांपल्स कैन हैपन सो पीपल हु आर गोइंग टू डू सम फैब्रिकेशन एंड देन दे आर गोइंग टू पुट इन द लाइव प्लांट दे नीड टू नो दैट इज स्ट्रेस करोजन क्रैकिंग इज वन ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स दे नीड टू काउंटर सो इन द सर्विस रिक्वायरमेंट इनिशिएट Indicate that residual stresses are undesirable. Designer must take them into account when selecting materials and deciding upon the safe working stress. So, in such conditions, designer could do. जो बोलता है वो करे बोलेगा कि इसको PWST करना जरूरी है क्योंकि ये नहीं तो आगे जाके stress corrosion में आ जाएगा. So, this inspector का कोई इसमें role नहीं है just to read the drawing properly. That's it. So, this can be seen in the design of ships where the combination of low temperature and residual stress can lead to brittle fracture. The designer selects a material not susceptible to the mode of failure, and even in the low temperature, where it can be experienced during the working life. So, charpe impact. हम लोगों ने low temperature पे क्यों करता है? ये इसीलिए है to uh, avoid this kind of issues, and you have to understand how the, your material will uh, will behave in the brittle fracture. So, the designer will decide this because he knows the service temperature and you know the upper and lower limit plus उसका जो design का safety limit है ये सब देखते हैं. so well uh, yes a point ho gaya hai fir uh, there are some specific application where the essential reduce level of residual stress in the well joint pressure vessel because of the risk of catastrophic failure by the residual stress linkages has statutory or insurance requirement so bahut bada bar insurance ka bhi requirement rehta hai ki ye stress relieve ho jaye although i have not come across any insurance asking i don't know but if they have written this then maybe in british or uh, uk or europe or us maybe there is uh, when the insurance is going to insure the project they will have to, they will also go into the engineering uh, and then they will naturally ask for it factors affecting residual stress so what are the factors ye point panch point to aapko sote jaagte uthte baithte yaad rakhna hai so ye aapko pura bayad kar lo material property affect karta hai amount of restraint fabricator ka kaam hai wo aapko affect karta hai joint ka design naturally affect karta hai fit up यही मैं बोल रहा था अमाउंट ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट और फिटअप अफेक्ट करता है और वेल्डिंग सीक्वेंस अफेक्ट करता है ये पांच पॉइंट में अगर आपने क्यूसी इंस्पेक्टर का रोल देखेगा मटेरियल प्रॉपर्टी में आपका कोई रोल नहीं है अमाउंट ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट में आपका काम है डिजाइन में आपका काम नहीं है फिटअप में आपका काम है वेल्डिंग सीक्वेंस में आपका काम है तो तीन जगह पे क्यूसी इंस्पेक्टर का काम इसमें बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और क्रिटिकल है सो व्हाट आर द कॉजेस ऑफ डिस्टोर्शन वेल्डिंग इन्वॉल्व्स हाईली लोकलाइज्ड हीटिंग जॉइंट एजेस टू फ्यूज द मटेरियल नॉन यूनिफॉर्म सेट ऑफ कोर्स यारी हम लोग अभी से 18th चैप्टर में है पूरा वेल्डिंग का बारे में पढ़ लिया है दोबारा कॉजेस ऑफ डिस्टोर्शन में वही बात लिखेगा तो आदमी बोर हो जाएगा बट एनीवे वी हैव टू गो थ्रू दिस गो थ्रू दिस सो इनिशियली कंप्रेस स्ट्रेसेस आर जनरेटेड सराउंडिंग कोर एंड वेल्ड पर वो वेल्डिंग होता है फिर वो यहां से खींचता है वहां से खींचता है वही लिखा है एचएस एरिया में सबसे ज्यादा क्रिटिकल होता है बिकॉज़ उधर का जो माइक्रो स्ट्रक्चर है वो डिफरेंट रहता है इसलिए सो द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ थर्मल स्ट्रेसेस इंड्यूस्ड इन द मटेरियल कैन बी सीन बाय वॉल्यूम चेंज इन द वेल्ड एरिया सॉलिडिफिकेशन या 3% 7% वापस वही बात होती है तो द मेन टाइप ऑफ डिस्टोर्शन ये भी आपको याद रखना है लॉन्जिट्यूडल श्रिंकेज हो सकता है ट्रांसफर श्रिंकेज हो सकता है क्योंकि लॉन्जिट्यूडल डायरेक्शन पे काम करता है ट्रांसफर डायरेक्शन में काम दो डायरेक्शन में तो काम करता ही है लेंथ और विथ में बट एंगुलर डिस्टोर्शन भी हो सकता है ये तो बहुत कॉमन है एंगल में डिस्टोर्शन विथ बोइंग एंड डिशिंग क्या होता है वो देखते हैं हम लोग फिर बकलिंग हो जाता है कभी कभी ये सब होता है तो आपको याद रखना जरूरी है एक एक चीज देखेंगे हम 